Welcome to the World's Telecommunication Development Conference, WTDC, here in Kigali, Rwanda, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by the Honourable Paula Ingabiri, who is the Minister of Information and Communication Technology and Innovation for the Government of Rwanda. Uh, Minister, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start off by asking you a little bit about uh, this WTDC. It's the first WTDC happening in Africa since the establishment of ITU's telecommunication development sector in 1992. What does it mean for Rwanda as the host country? Thank you. And, and as you rightly said, yes, it's the first time it's happening on the African continent. It's a big win uh, for Africa and also being part of the ITUD uh, sector members. And very particularly for Rwanda, it's been a truly, it's truly been a privilege for us to, to host the very first uh, WTDC um, in Africa. We also, um, what it also means is that we've also uh, going to be part and parcel of um, shaping what the next four years agenda is going to look like. And that's not something that's just unique uh, to Rwanda, I guess also for the rest of the continent. But what's also more important is the ability to host and give all the delegates, all the visitors, a test of Africa, a test of Rwanda, which in many ways we've been able to achieve outside uh, the conference facilities. And how's it been going? It's been going great. I think we are now, you know, almost halfway into the second week of WTDC uh, 2022. The very first week was was uh, had a number of uh, events, including the the, the youth, the, the Generation Connect Global Youth Summit that really brought together youth representatives from you know about 115 countries. It was highly energized and you know a powerful summit where the youth were keen and very engaged in, in, in being part and parcel of shaping. The, 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 the telecommunication agenda going forward, um, but also at the same time really listening to you know their asks and how they really want to contribute, which was very exciting. And so being the very first Generation Connect Youth Summit also happening here in Rwanda, I believe it's created the right momentum in really bringing together everyone uh, that is going to be part and parcel of this agenda. It was also followed by the Partner to Connect uh, Summit, which has been an amazing one with over 300 uh, pledges that have been you know, um, you know, put forward by different partners, countries, and you can see a resolve uh, to really work together to build the right partnerships, to, to, to bring in the right resources so that we can collectively close on the digital divide in the different parts of the world. And obviously now we come into WTDC where we had the opening ceremony, but also at the same time the sessions that continue to happen as we look at the resolutions, the Kigali Declaration, the Action Plan, and all of this has been quite exciting. But outside all these um, you know, forums and sessions, uh, it's also been great, which I think you've also been part of, whether it's um, you know, the Walk to Connect, which is really a great cause um, in really raising awareness um, to have more uh, women um, in decision-making positions, to have more women engaged um, in the telecommunication development agenda. And by the way, before I forget, that also brings us to the network of women, which has also had a series um, of discussions and, 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 and roundtables, really, that is targeted to understand what more can be done to empower uh, more women to join uh, the various leadership positions, but also the work uh, that they develop, the ITUD um, is, is, is seeking to push forward. Great, and we'll come back to that in a moment because I think it's a very important topic. Uh, now, you're, you're gracing us here in the studio. Um, previously, I've, we've chatted as, as you as minister, but here you're, you're here as a, a chair of this conference, which, which of course has uh, um, brought its, its own particular challenges. I wanted to ask you, you've been here chair of the conference for the last week and a half. Perhaps you could give us some insights into the WTDC agenda what are the, and what are the key outcomes that you hope to see from this landmark development conference? So uh, a couple of things that I see even starting with, um, I did mention the Partner to Connect even looking at the different pledges uh, that have been put forward um, as we collectively and individually work towards uh, you know, uh, closing the digital divide but also um, even picking up from some of the recent, recent resolutions that have been adopted during the plenary session, including the school connectivity project around GIGA, which in many ways, as we come out of the COVID-19 pandemic, one of the sectors that has been heavily affected is education. And so realizing that one, um, you know, school connectivity is essential as we bridge the digital divide, but at the same time going forward as we recover better and stronger, uh, this becomes a priority initiative uh, for all of us going forward. Um, the other thing is really, as I said, setting the agenda 
for the next four years. Um, as, as we think about the 2.9 billion people that still remain unconnected, what is it that we're going to do differently over the next four years uh, to, co to connect them and bring them on board? And so all the way from thinking about infrastructure, what are some of those affordable and innovative ways of deploying infrastructure in a fast manner? How do we equip them with the right skills and devices and the right content that will also uh, push on the usage gap, which when you look at the statistics where we look at the unconnected, there's so many people that live in areas of coverage but still haven't been able to benefit from that. And so these are some of the things as we go forward um, out of WTDC that will be priorities on what we do for the next four years ahead of the upcoming uh, WTDC, which will happen in four years. Now you, you mentioned uh, some of these, but I just wanted to perhaps delve a little bit deeper. What do you think will be the major opportunities and challenges for the digital development sector over the current decade? In terms of opportunities, one, it's the understanding of um, you know, the, the, the challenge at hand. I think everyone has a better sense of, 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 uh, of what it's, it's going to take uh, to close on the gap. But in terms of challenges, um, you have different uh, maturity levels of the digital landscape. And so uh, finding a one-size-fits-all set of strategies that will close on the gap in different parts of the world may be quite a challenge. And I think it's also an opportunity in one way. I like to uh, look at challenges as an opportunity to find innovative ways you know, to, to address those challenges. And I think um, what we have, whether it's the declaration, the, the action plan, or um, you know, the resolutions, they give you a broad framework under which we, you know, respective countries are going to be um, you know, uh, deploying resources to close the digital divide. What will be different, though, is the how. Uh, because of the, di the varying maturity levels of the digital uh, landscape, which is very important. And maybe the other thing is that eventually, even as we deploy resources, build the right partnerships to close on the digital divide, uh, is figuring out how we measure that, which is still a sticky point, but then aligning on um, a set of criteria on how we measure readiness, maturity and growth uh, towards closing the digital divide. Now, the telecommunications sector has not uh, historically been a, a sector where women have been heavily involved, uh, where gender parity has been uh, um, a, a priority. However, things are changing now and I wanted to ask you, uh, should any specific efforts be pursued to expand women's access to and the use of information and communication technologies, which you're the Minister of, as well as to enable uh, women to take up leadership positions in the field, because it's not just following things along, but actually taking, uh, being there, uh, having a seat at the table, and, and starting specifically with digital development and the IT development sector. And what do you think are the ingredients needed to ensure full mainstreaming of a gender perspective uh, to, for ICTs? You're right, things are changing and, and, and it's already good that we're starting from um, you know, a, a common ground of understanding that it's urgent, it's important that we all uh, think about gender mainstreaming in the different initiatives that we're taking forward. So that's already a good starting point because there's a lot of consensus, a, a lot of excitement and commitment to do that. Um, but going forward again, so, so it's one thing, um, and I think when, when you look at the WTDC22 um, you know, summit that is happening this year, uh, you also see a lot of participation uh, for, of, of women from different um, you know, countries and so you could see there's been a deliberate effort from the different countries, uh, one to include uh, women um, in, as part of the delegation so that they are part of you know, the decisions that are going to be made last week and this week. But also beyond that, I think we need to be thinking going forward um, because yes, there are women who are capable today, women who can be given an opportunity to serve and contribute to uh, the telecommunication development agenda. But as we, look f as we look forward, what we need to be thinking about is how do we create a critical mass of women that are capable and are able to contribute. And that is going to start all the way uh, from the education system, primary school, secondary school. How do we encourage more women and girls to take up STEM uh, programs and careers? And then as you funnel them through, uh, you know, exposing them to leadership opportunities, uh, training them, skilling, upskilling them throughout the way so that they have the right skills, that when they're given that opportunity, when they're part of that, uh, they are really contributing in a significant manner. And so I think we're at a, we're at a good place where that is already happening happening uh, and, and women are really taking their place and so it, it's going that means we'll have very balanced decisions discussions that taking into consideration what would be the uniqueness of, of the needs uh, as we as we bridge the, the the digital divide I mean you are a living and breathing example of, uh, of this I just wanted to ask you what what got you to where you are today how did you get to, how did you get to where you are today so 
for me, it, it, it was first of all the leadership, even believing in one, the the, the opportunity to empower women and, and and the right to empower women and and, and 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 young people, the youth, and so for us in Rwanda that has not been a problem because there's been the leadership has been soaking on that on on youth empowerment, on women empowerment, so it was natural uh, to be able to to uh, and not just for myself by the way, it's many young women and and and, uh, and girls that have really been empowered and given and the opportunity uh, to contribute. The second thing is also being able to, you know, expose, give, being given the right tools, uh, the right um, uh, capacity building programs that allow you uh, to really serve uh, adequately in the capacities that you've been provided. But it all starts with uh, the belief, the faith, but also the, 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 the dedication to feel that it's going to be a continuous job to empower women at any given time and, and this is where we are at today. So I, I am one of you know, the many that have been privileged to be given the opportunity to serve. Today our cabinet has um, over 51% of women representation, our parliament is over 62% and we're seeing a lot of that also happening in the private sector as well. Uh, obviously when you think about the tech sector, just like the statistics globally, we still have fewer uh, women uh, in the sector and so there's there's a deliberate focus on, on empowering young girls um, to take up STEM subjects and so over, over the next few years we'll start to see a critical mass of young women and leaders that are really at the helm of this tra transformational work that will be happening not just in Rwanda but across the continent. Well we've been extremely grateful to have you here as a chair of the WTDC conference so thank you very much for taking on that role and we wish you all the very best with uh, uh, the rest of the conference and of course to your career as, as a minister uh, and we look forward to catching up with you again very soon um, at another ITU event I'm sure and uh, thank you very much indeed again for hosting us here uh, in the wonderful Kigali Rwanda. Thank you. Thank you for having me today.